ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته قال المؤلف حفظ الله أركان العقيدة والإيمان وجدت نسو الله سبحانه وتعالى وآسوء الصلاة والسلام محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شاء الله tonight we continue the reading and the explanation from the book Bayanu Arkan al-Iman Last week we discussed about Hakikotu al-Iman wal-Aqidah The essence of al-Iman What is the purpose of al-Iman which we discussed uh, in our last discussion The Sheikh said تقرر مما سبق أن الأقيدة الإسلامية it has been explained in our previous lectures that the Islamic belief is الإيمان الجازم والتصديق التام بالله تعالى it is to have faith in Allah the type of faith that does not have any iota of doubt the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anything that comes from Allah and what is necessary to relate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to believe in all this and and the reality of this, the ability of believing in everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. The reality of this will, will be shown in our intention, in our statement, in our action. And to move away to abandon anything that can contaminate or invalidate that necessary belief. Al Imanu Al Wajib. In our previous lectures, we made us to understand the difference between Al Imanu Al Wajib. Then Al Imanu Ghiru Al Wajib. Al Imanu Al Wajib, this is the primary message of the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that every believer must believe. Whether you are you are lettered or you are unlettered, whether you are a scholar or you are not a scholar, everybody must believe. Whether you live in the city or you live in the village. This consists of believing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only him is the creator. Only him deserves to worship, and only him must be given the worship to. So this is the primary belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same thing with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same thing with the books and other pillars of al-Iman. This is what we call al-Imanu al-Wajib. So a Muslim must not do anything that can contaminate, that can invalidate, that can destroy this necessary Iman, this obligatory Iman. وقد بيّن الله تعالى أصول الإيمان بقوله سبحانه بشكل سيد الله سبحانه وتعالى as explained in in the statement in the Quran سورة البقرة Quran chapter two verse one seven seven Allah has explained to us in this verse أصول الإيمان the fundamentals of إيمان the pillars of الإيمان وقال تعالى Allah says 
ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين خلاص يس لن ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشر the kindness the righteousness is not restricted to you facing the west or you are facing the east it is, it is not restricted to salat alone ولكن البر but the righteousness consists من آمن بالله those who believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى واليوم الآخر and the last day والملائكة and the angels of Allah والكتاب the books of Allah والنبيين and the messengers of Allah وقوله سبحانه شيخ سيد وصو الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد إن شاء الله القمر بس في 49 إن كل شيء خلقناه لقدر Everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. He created everything with what? The qadar, with decree. Given everything is portion. What he needs, what he deserves. So this is the evidence that al-iman of al-qadar is one of the fundamentals of al-iman. You can see that it is not included in that verse of Surah al-Baqarah verse 177. But in Surah al-Qamarah, uh, verse 49 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes the al-iman bil-qadar wa jama'aha al-nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi hijabatihi ala suhali jibreel alayhi salam inna man qala lahu mal-iman the sheikh said the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam compiled all these pillars of al-iman fundamentals of al-iman usul al-iman in his response to Jibreel alayhi salam, when Jibreel asked him, Man Iman, what is Iman? So, the Sheikh here is referring to the hadith popularly known by the scholars of hadith to be Hadithu Jibreel. Hadithu Jibreel. If you want to search it on the Google, Hadithu Jibreel is only one hadith. Not that, it is only that hadith that uh, that that showed the interaction between the prophet and the, and the Jibri. No, there are many hadiths like that. But this particular hadith is known to be Hadithu Jibri. So it is that hadith reported by Imam Muslim, Sahih Muslim, Allah, when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in the Masjid in Medina, giving lecture to the companions, then. A, a straight person came in, he sat with him, then the conversation <coughs> came up in between both of them. At the end of the day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa later informed the companions that the stranger was no one than Jibreel alayhi salatu wa So that hadith is known as Hadith Jibreel. In the, in the context of that hadith, Jibreel alayhi salam asked that Mali Iman asking the student who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqal Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al-iman al-iman the belief the Islamic faith that is why we need to understand the all these Islamic terms the way that Islam has given us the information on every one of them checking Oxford dictionary she, is it Maryam or Miriam? Miriam or, or, or David or anyone cannot give you the required information of any one of the Islamic terms. Now, when you check dictionary, believe. Believe is believe. Believe is believe. The way you will take it from dictionary is the way non Muslim take it from dictionary. Is it the same thing? It's not the same thing. So, until you go back to the Islamic explanation, because these are Islamic words, Islamic terms must be understood by Islamic information. And that is why uh, Abu Talib Abu Talib could not be counted as part of as part of the Muslim. Yes, he was not a Muslim. The same thing, Fir'aun was not a Muslim. Yes, because uh, Abu Talib you could not say Radhi Allah because he died being a kafir. So and he, he, belie he believed in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said it. I believe in you. Yes, I never heard from you anything of falsehood. 
I believe in I believe in your message, but I will never be one of your members. So there's none between Ali Iman or Lugawi and Ali Iman al Islami. The language meaning of Iman means that's the, to believe in something. But sometimes you may believe in something why you may not submit to that thing. You believe in something but you not submit to it. Until you submit to it, then you have Al Imanu Al Islami. Do we get it? When uh what Yusuf, the siblings of Yusuf came to Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. What did they say? They say, Ya Abana, O oh, our father. We left Yusuf aside and we went on playing. By the time we noticed, see, the fox has eaten him up. They came with cloth of Yusuf soaked with blood. The father said, Yeah. I can see what you see. Yeah, but I don't believe. Eh? Yeah. That is what you see, what your information. Yeah, I agree with your information. I agree with your information, but I don't submit to it. So it's, that shows the difference between Al Imanul Islami and Al Al Imanul Al Lodawi. And this is where some school of some uh, Muqtada innovators they went from, like Murkia, like Ashaira, some other uh, video schools of thoughts. They went astray. Because some of them were related with Al Iman, the way the language has placed it, not the way Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought it. The Murugia will say, once you believe in something, that is the end. Once you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your iman will never get decreased. And your iman will never get increased. Your iman is iman. You believe, you believe. Is that Islam? No. Iman of Islam, we, your iman will increase of righteousness and it will decrease of unrighteousness. So, this is what the Sheikh is saying here that when Jibreel alayhi salam came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he asked Muhammad about mal iman. What is the iman? What is the iman? And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not give him linguistic meaning. He said al iman and took mina bin Allah. For you to have iman, to believe in Allah, the kind of belief that does not have any iota of doubts. Yes, living in your heart, professing on your tongue, expressing with your part of the body, and to mina the law to believe in Allah, wa malaikatihi, and his and his uh, angels, his malaika, wa kutubihi, his books, wa rusulihi, his messengers, wa liyam al akhir, and to believe in the the last day, wa to mina bil qadar, khairihi wa sharrihi. And to believe in the last day, to believe in the destiny, predestination, the good or bad, anything that comes to you is known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this is what we call the fundamentals of Al Iman. And that is why uh, Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn Khattab, who narrated this hadith, who brought up this hadith when some people came from Kufa. To perform Umrah in Makkah, they were tabi'un. They were now looking for some of the companions to ask of the issue that came up in their environment. Fortunately for them, they met Abdullah ibn Umar and they said, Yeah, Abdullah ibn Umar. There are some people in our area. They said, Al Amru Unuf. Al Amru Unuf means nobody knows. Nobody knows. Allah does not know. The human beings do, do not know. Nobody knows when things will come up. Nobody have nobody has pre knowledge of every action, even including Allah. It is when we know that okay, it has happened. <laughs> it is that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also is aware of that of its happening. That is, Allah subhanahu does not decree anything. Allah does not have pre knowledge. You know, the iman of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. We've said it several times. 
If you want to believe in Iman al Qadar, you have to believe in four pillars of Al Qadar. You believe that Allah has pre knowledge of every action. There is nothing that will come up, that will come into existence. The knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, covers it. Allah knows everything about it. Your tomorrow, my tomorrow, tomorrow Monday, how will it be? The next four years, how will it be? The next hundred years, one million years, the end of the world, the knowledge is with Allah. Only Allah. But this set of people, they said no. Allah does not have the knowledge of anything, so nothing is decreed by Allah. So when Abdullah ibn Umar had this from them, he said, tell them when you get to them, that in me bari hum in hum, I free myself from them. Wa hum hum in we don't know them, they don't know us. Now tell them, la yuminu, they do not believe, hatta yuminu bil qadar, until they believe in qadar. So this is what led to that narration of this hadith. Then the Sheikh said, wa fi mayati, أُشِيرُ إِلَى جُمْلَةٍ مِنْ مُهِمَّاتِ كُلِّ رُطْنِ مِنْ عَذِهِ الْأَرْكَانَ السِّتَّةِ عَلَى وَجْهِ يَعْسُلْ بِهِ الْمَفْسُورِ إِنْشَاءَاللَّهِ The Sheikh said, from the next page, he will be discussing every one of these fundamentals of our Iman, the way that we need to understand it, the concept, the belief, our belief, how should our belief be on any one of these arkanal iman or sitta, these Six fundamentals of Al Iman, insha'Allah. Sa'il Allah Taala al al Huda wa Sadat, asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala the guidance and also the success. Wal Waqaya min al Zalal to protect us from errors. Wa Taufiq li Sahih al Hamal. Al Rukun al Awal, the first pillar of Al Iman. The first pillar of Al Iman is Al Iman of Billahi Ta'ala. Is to believe in Allah. To believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first. You can see in that hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam. Tarif al Iman, Loga. The Sheikh said, number one, the meaning of Al Iman in language. Many scholars, many scholars. Had the opinion that an al iman of the law or what this deal the holy hit hala what this dick some scholars said al iman means at this dick to believe in something as we explained as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wama anta be mu men in lana wala kuna sadiqi the ikhwat yusuf al ikhwat yusuf alayhi musalam the Tori Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam that okay with all our explanations we know from my answer the moment lana you don't have imani imani of what of our explanation even though we are being truthful that shows imani is derived from truthfulness truthful iman is another is is is, is an increase it's an, an it's an it will be a, an increase on that truthfulness so only truthfulness is not enough to be an iman. I am a doctor. So today, Mumin, Iman will not be what? Will not be tested. Some scholars said, Al Iman of Loga, Wal Ikra Rubishi, to testify to something. And tasdeek in bihi through one's belief in that thing. Bidaleel tafariq bayna qawli bukawli qail. Just like when someone says, I meant to be kada. I believe in something. I akurar to bihi. I testify to him. Wasadak to fulana. I believe or I trusted someone. Wala ta kul a man to fulana. You don't say a man to fulana. You can say Sadaqtu Fulana. Whatever the person I said is was is is truth. So we say Sadaqtu Fulana. Sadaqtuka. You don't say Amantu, Amantu Laka. You don't say it. So that is why you can see that the the meaning of Al Iman in language is different from the meaning of Al Iman 
in syariah ta'riful iman syar'an bina ala ma sabaqa fal iman fil lugha by this you can see that iman in language yatadammanu zaidan ala mujarrad at tasdid iman in language linguistic meaning of iman requires a, a additional uh, additional interpretation to the to that meaning of tasdik wa huwa al iqrar al iqrar testifying to something wa al itiraf bi shay submitting to it al mustalzim li qabul al khabar which will make that person to accept every information on that thing or that comes from that thing wal idaan al hukmih and also to accept his ruling fa huwa amrun ilmi i'tiqadi yatarattabu alayhi amal qalbi the issue of al iman in islam is as to with knowledge belief which requires actions actions of the heart amalu al qalbi actions of the heart wa qawlu al lisan statement of the tongue wa amalu bil jawarihi and the actions of the extremes the parts of the body that is why the ahlus sunnah wal jamaah in their different exp uh, explanations expressions they made us to understand that iman iman in in islam uh, reflects on three places one your heart your heart we have what we call qulu al iman your heart speaks amalu al qulu li qalbi wa amalu al qalbi and the action of the heart we have qulu al lisan your tongue speaks wa amalu al lisan your your tongue acts then wa amalu al jawarihi what you do with your legs your hands your eyes every part of your body this only require action not statement <coughs> this is the position of ahlus sunnah wal jamaah so then fa inna man kadhaba al khabara an karahu qalba because we have that denies an information that he must believe it shows that he it denies that from his heart those who do not believe in allah they do not believe not because they say it no because a muslim someone that believes in allah sometimes may also utter the same thing why in his heart he believes in allah muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah ashad farha allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happier than a man who was that man this man traveled with his camel with his food with his drink so he got to a place on the desert he rested by the time he woke up no camel no food no drink so he was moving here and there searching for the camel searching for the food and the drink okay he slept by the time he woke up again he discovered that the camel and the food and everything were beside him he was so happy then he said anta abudi wa ana rabbu muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said aqwa min shiddat al far the man said oh god you are my servant i am your lord muhammad said aqwa he made a mistake why because of what because of over joyfulness so he was a muslim sometimes a muslim will utter the statement that the non muslim will also utter but what shows the difference is the heart is the heart so that is why your iman lives in the heart your statement your 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 heart also must speak iman your heart must act on iman the same thing with your tongue your tongue also must speak of iman your tongue also must act on iman why the part of the body we now submit to it so whoever that denies any one of the information it show that the person denied that from his heart except he is being forced he is being forced to say it is being forced that is al uh, 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 ikrar is being forced just like uh, uh, amar bin yasr was being forced to deny muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
He could not say it, but when the punishment was too much, he said it on his tongue. While he, he still believed in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Sheikh said, to deny an information is from the heart. To accept it is also from the heart. And also to abandon the actions that are required for someone to 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 do is also from the heart. Whoever that believes an information, its its heart will be at rest to that information. And he will now utter statement that will show that yes, he believes in that thing in his in his heart. And his actions will show that yes, he believes in it. That is why he will do what is permissible and he will not do what is not permissible. In conclusion, the meaning of Al Iman in Islam is وَمَا دَلَّ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةُ وَإِجْمَعُ السَّلَفُ الصَّالِحِ مِنَ الْأُمَّةِ It is whatever information that comes from the Qur'an, from the Sunnah, also from the early Muslims, from the companions, from, from the companions of قَوْلٌ بِالْلِسَانِ What you will say in your, heart, in your tongue, and the belief, the belief and the action, the belief and the action of the heart, and the action of the part of the body. So this is the definition of al of uh, al iman according to al sunnah wal jamaah. It involves three places: heart, tongue, part of the body. Heart. Statement of the heart, action of the heart. Tongue, statement of the tongue, action of the tongue. Then the part of the body only uh, have action, no statement. When you say, La ilaha illallah, this is the statement of, of the tongue. Are you not saying it without believing it in your heart? You've already believed in it before you say before you said it. Then, when you want to observe any righteousness, like salat, like zakat, intention will come first. Intention is an act of the art. Intention is an act of the art. Act of the art. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا قَوْلُوا لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, وَإِذَا تُلِيَّتِ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ You know, the, the, the beginning, that when the, 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 the believers, now, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِذَا ذِكْرَ اللَّهُ وَجْلَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَجْلَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَجْلَةِ That's the verb. قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts will feel troubled for the fear of Allah. That means our heart also acts. Acts. When someone dies, everybody will become calm. Your heart is working at that time. It's working. So, Iman lives in the heart. By action, Iman also lives in the heart by statement. If you want to worship, you want to do anything, you would, the intention will be there, and also you, you you profess it, you say it. It is not enough to say I believe in Allah, I, in my heart. Why your 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 tongue uh, opposes it? It is not. It is not done like that in Sharia. Or you don't say hey, I believe in Allah. I believe my tongue doesn't believe. My heart believes, but I don't pray. No salat, no zakat, no anything. You don't do anything. No, it is not done like that. So this is the, 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 the this is the place of differences. The point where we have different sects in Islam. This is the place. The concept of al iman. This is where the Khawarij emanated, the Murjia emanated, the Ashaira emanated. All of them. That is it. The, the, the meaning of the of the iman to them. You can see the al sunnah al sunnah believe that your iman, iman resides in your heart, in your tongue. Then it must also be reflected in your part of the body. But to al sunnah 
Yeah, if a Muslim fails, if a Muslim fails in doing any one of the obligations, does it mean that that Muslim is iman has been invalidated, has been nullified? That is the position of the Khawarij. It's not the position of Al Sunnah. So to, to the Khawarij, to Al Sunnah, if a Muslim drinks alcohol, you know alcohol is haram. Illegal sexual intercourse is haram. If a Muslim falls into that, Ahl Sunnah will still see him as what? As Ahl Sunnah. But they will not say his level of Iman is the same thing with someone who does not commit the same offense. Look at it now. They will say that is that person for that illegal act, yes, his Iman has reduced. Why someone who does not drink alcohol? Someone who is not, does not commit the same offense, who runs away from all this, his iman increases. So that is why the Al Sunnah brought about the concept of increase and decrease of iman, which there are many verses in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points to it. See as we are in the mosque, listen to the lectures. Are we saying the same level of iman that we have? It's the same thing with those Muslims, our brothers and sisters in Islam. Who are already in the nightclub dancing, drinking alcohol, the same level of iman? Al Sunnah will not accept that. At the same time, Al Sunnah will not say they are non Muslim, they are kafir, they are unbelievers because they commit all those sins. So, what we make Al Sunnah say that someone is no more a Muslim is when a Muslim legalizes illegality. The Muslim says that drinking alcohol, taking off riba is halal. After all explanations, then Al Sunnah will say, You are no more a Muslim. But if a Muslim co collects riba, if a Muslim involved in stealing, killing, he's still a Muslim. But his iman is reducing for those acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the Khawarij, the Khawarij will say, No. Whoever among the Muslims that fails, that fails to be dutiful to, to all obligations, even if just only one, that person is no more a Muslim. So to them, a Muslim that drinks alcohol is a Catholic. A Muslim that, uh, that, 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 that involved in uh, illegal sexual intercourse, to them, is a Catholic. A Muslim that, that, that smokes, a Muslim that smokes, that collects riba, a Muslim that kills another Muslim to them is a non-Muslim. So that is why we are having a problem all over the world. Because the theory, the, 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 the theory of the Harijism has become widespread all over the land. This what led to Boko Haram, what led to ISIS, what led to Shabab in Somalia, what led to in different places. The concept of Ali Iman. Why will you kill a Muslim? For drinking alcohol. Why? Because to them, he is no more a Muslim. His word is a kafir. Why? Because he drinks alcohol. So, but Al Sunnah will not call the person a kafir until the person legalizes it. Or the person commits shirk or kufr. After all explanations. So, this is where the, the bone of differences among the schools of thought. Then the Murijiyat. This is another school of thought. To them, an iman to them is just a test deck. When you believe, you believe. To them, they don't believe that iman increases, iman decreases. To them, the level of our iman is the same to the level of Abu Bakr Siddiq, Umar Ibn Khattab, Uthman Ibn Affan. To them, iman does not increase. To iman is just like a jamid, a stagnant water it doesn't flow it doesn't flow it doesn't flow it doesn't flow out so but i also not say no iman is not like that every act of obedience increases iman and every act of disobedience decreases iman and which is natural it is natural yes because when you commit a sin as a conscious muslim you have to tell you you will feel that you feel that Hey, that is sincerity in you. You feel it. That is why you don't, you, you don't let people to know about it. 
You like me to, to know. And when you do something good, you would like to be praised for it. When someone dies, everyone will become calm. Those who those who, who, who they don't pray at all. When someone dies in the community and they see the conscious one go to the money, where are you going? We are going to I now. Call us now, Adi. It is that time they will know that Allah created them to worship Allah. Because their iman has been increased. So there are many verses on this as the references of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. So the Murjiyah, the Murjizim, they do not have any reference to that position. That Iman is just stagnant. Iman does not increase. Iman does not decrease. It's time for Hanan. Okay. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله بشكل سير وكم من آية قرآنية صريحة وحديث نبوي صحيح وأثر ثابت عن السلف فضمنا إطلاق اسم الإيمان على اعتقادات القلوب وعمالها وأقواب الألسن وعمال الجواري He said there are many verses in the Quran and many narrations from Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and many traces from the early Muslims that established that the word al-iman al-iman is used for uh, beliefs of the heart and the actions of the heart and the statements of the tongue and the actions uh, of the bodies muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man kana yu'minu billah wal yawm al-akhir falyaqul khaira aw liyasmi that means keeping silent when you don't have good thing to say, is Iman. Is Iman. And if you do that, your Iman will get increased. Then, if someone does not have something something good to say, he says evil thing, bad thing, then it shows that his Iman will be decreased. So if, if that is why, Lisan, uh, it is part of Iman to safeguard, to protect, to reserve your tongue. He said, Man kana daifa, jara, fala yudi jara. Different narrations. And whoever that believes in Allah on the last day, that person should honor his guest. So honoring of guest is Iman. So if you honor your guest, your iman will, will be increased because you've done a, a shiroba, a section of iman. And someone who dishonor his guest, his iman will be decreased. So every action is part of an iman. A salat is iman. A salat is iman. When the companions go to uh, Medina, 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn the, the Qibla to Betul uh, to Betul Haram Allah says وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُذِيَا إِمَانَكُمْ Allah will never we never waste your Iman which Iman is that? all the books of Tafsir establish that the Iman there is what? a Salat because there are some companions who died in Mecca no, the revelation of Salat came to them a year or two years or three years before they left for Medina. So, some of them observe Salat and the kind of Salat that they observe, they faced uh, Beitul Maqdis. So, when they got to Medina, after 17 months or 18 months, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed his time. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the Qibla for them. And some of them died while the, the Salat that they observed before the death, the, the faced basically mark this. So it is Iman. Allah says, Allah will never waste your Iman. So every action, every action that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to do, doing it, we increase our Iman. We increase our Iman. Not doing it, we decrease Iman. We decrease uh, our iman. At the end, the Sheikh said, "Wa anahu yazidu bi ta'ah." We must believe that in the iman, Islamic faith, iman, belief, yazidu bi ta'ah, it increases by obedience. Wa yankus bil maasiya, it reduces with disobedience. Wa nususu fiya the akthar min antuhusar, antuhusar wa ashiyar min antuthka. References for this that iman increases, iman decreases. They are more than what one can count. They are more than what one can mention in the in the verse of the Quran. Eh? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was in Surah al uh, Allah says, amanu iman." For the believers to have increase in their iman. So if the iman does not increase, why will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say this? So iman increases, iman decreases. It increases with righteousness. And it decreases with unrighteousness. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يشرب المومن إن يشرب المومن When a moment drinks alcohol, at that time, he is not a moment. The, one, the meaning of E is not a mumin. The, the Khawarij, the terrorist, understood it to be that he does not have Iman at all. No. That's not what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi intended. He said, because if you have Iman, the, but there's what we call primary and secondary. The primary Iman is still there. But the secondary Iman, they don't have. You don't have if you drink alcohol. Where you still have the primary Iman. Because we have many companions that drank alcohol. We have many companions that they committed sexual intercourse. So, Muhammad Islam did not say they are kufar, or they are unbelievers, or their iman is, is invalidated. But the khawarij, we will say no. Whoever that commits any major sin, then that person, uh, his iman has become invalidated. Is it time? So, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahabihi. Wassalamu alaikum wa